So like, you live differently. Why is that? Basically, it all started with this. So uh, I don't know how your week was, but my week was great. And the reason why it was great was because of Monday night. <laughs> if you're not laughing, you, have no, you weren't here last week. And uh, half my sermon was on the Mets. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good week. So it was a good game. So for you and I, the challenge is, is how do we live for Jesus in a lost world? And I challenge you guys to, to say, write down 1 Peter 3, uh, 15, all over your house. And so someone emailed me a picture. You'll see it on the screen. It was really, really good. And uh, I was like, that, that's awesome. So it inspired me. So uh, my, my son was wearing his, his Yankees shirt. And so uh, we were playing catch. So here's what I, what I did to his shirt. <laughs> See how I covered that Yankee symbol up as much as I possibly could. <laughs> so all joking aside, I am excited for today. I'm excited because we're continuing on this journey of what the everyday gospel is all about. We talked about it last week, how the everyday gospel, how it's not just good enough for be a good, to be a good neighbor, that we as Christ followers, we are called to, to go to a place where we are sharing the hope of Jesus with our friends, our families, and our coworkers. And that's what these four weeks are all, all about. Uh, what Josh and I are sharing from God's word is how do we bring this everyday gospel, the hope of Jesus, to a lost world around us? And last week, we looked at this idea of revere, about putting Jesus as number one. And I, I illustrated by this, that, that when we put Jesus as our number one, the world makes sense. That we're connected to God and we're going, okay, God, it, it all makes sense. But that every day we are pulled away from God and Jesus being our number one. And we're pulled to this place where we're trying to make sense of the world, but we are far from God and far from him being our number one. And when we're here, the everyday gospel does not exist in our vocabulary or in our actions or in anything that we're living out. But that it takes hard work, it takes action by us to get back to this place where God's our number one, and then we can go out into the world and bring the gospel. And I encourage you last week with our, step, with our different steps of worship, community, serving, ownership, take one of those steps this week to get back to here. Now, this is a journey. This doesn't happen overnight. You can't just go up, I'm gonna click on the switch, and Jesus is my number one again. It takes work. And so my question before we even start this, this morning is, were you able to start that journey of having him be your number one again? Because we can, get, we can give lip service to Jesus and say, that was a great sermon last week, but then there was no action and if there was no action, no putting him back as your number one, what I'm going to talk about today, what Josh will talk about for the next two weeks, it will lead nowhere for you. It starts by us putting him back as number one. So Lord, help us this morning. As you are number one in our life, then for us to be prepared, to set ourselves in, in, in the place Lord, where others see something different in us and start asking questions. Lord, teach us what it means to be prepared today. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Peter 3, 15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And do this with gentleness and respect. Today, we're not going to go into this, that second sentence, the ending, where we have the answer. But what I want to focus on is in this idea of prepare. Josh will talk about how do we actually speak the words of the gospel to our friends. But today, I, I want to help us to realize that there's a, there's a 
kind of an area that we're going to be in. When we have Christ as our number one, and our friends are over here, and they're asking us about our, our hope. What is your hope? Wh who is Jesus to you? There's this middle ground, and this middle ground is being prepared. It says always be prepared. What does that mean for us? And I want to go through that with you this morning. Being prepared means putting Jesus as your number one. You're saying, Jeremy, you preached that last week. What I preached last week was this. Put Jesus as your number one. You connect with him. Today, when you're prepared, when Jesus is your number one, guess what happens? Your, every, your, your Jesus as your everything goes into the world and you impact others. Because you see, when Jesus is our number one, it's not just connecting us with Jesus, it's connecting us with everyone else in the world. Your number one, when Jesus is your number one, you will impact people. I guarantee it. I guarantee it because of this. Because when you look at the world and what people are living for, it's the complete opposite of what it means to have Jesus as your number one. Because the world is saying these things. The world is saying, live selfishly. And when Jesus is your number one, you're going to be selfless. See, the world is saying, be greedy. But Jesus says, be generous. See, the world is saying, it's okay to be angry. But Jesus is saying, be joyful. See, the world is okay with families in disarray. But Jesus wants our families to honor him and to raise our kids to honor him. See, the world is trying to outdo each other. Jesus is saying, live in humility. You see, when I have Jesus as my number one, the world will take notice. They will see something different and they will say, how is that happening in your life? How are you doing that? I was on the baseball field coaching my son, seven and eight-year-olds, and I had a couple assistant coaches, and we're on the field with the kids because they like to pick dandelions and throw rocks, and so you're on the field trying to coach them, and halfway throughout the season, one of my assistant coaches, as we're in the outfield, comes over and goes, Jeremy, how do you have so much patience for these kids? And I said, honestly, the only way I have it is because of my relationship with Jesus. I'm a wound-up, tight guy. I love to win. I want my team to win. But guess what? Jesus has shown me a different way. He's taught me that I can be patient. I can love these kids, that my love is more important than everything else. And I said those words, and then I had to run over and actually stop two kids from throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> but he noticed something different. And I'm being real truthful with you. If I did not have Jesus in my life, I probably couldn't coach kids because I wouldn't have the patience. That's not naturally who I am. But Je Jesus has changed my life. He's changed me and helped me to see that there is a better way to live my life. And he's given me just a little patience. But that patience is recognized by others around me. Secondly, being prepared means your actions match your words. Your actions match your words when you're a person who's prepared. I love Jesus, but I cheat like everyone else in my math class on those tests. I love Jesus, but I gossip with all the other mothers in the PTO. I love Jesus, but my neighbor always put, puts his lawn clippings on my side of the yard, and I get so ticked off, I throw them back to his side. I love Jesus, but when the reviews come back about me being a manager, they show that no one thinks that I care for them at all. I'm all about my own ego and what's happening at work for me. Barna Research Group found that of young people, 30 years and younger, what they most long for are people who are genuine and respectful. 
who are living out their faith in a way that is real and relevant to them. Church, it's not about glitz and glamour and haze and great worship, having a great church building to bring people to. What's going to bring people to Jesus is us being real and being relevant in their life and saying, this is what Jesus has done in my life and here are my words and actions and they line up together. I don't say I love Jesus and then do something else. This is who I am. You know, for myself, I find that I grow in a great way in my community group. That my community group here at BlackRock helps me to put my words and my actions together so that I can live out my faith in a powerful way. Because I get to talk about it and say, how is this truly going to happen in my world, in my experience with my family? If you are not in a community group here at Black Rock this fall, if you want to put Jesus as your number one, you want to live out your faith and make your actions and your words match up and line up, join a community group and say, hey, I'm going to learn together with others what it means to live out my faith. Titus 1.16 has some really strong words from the Apostle Paul. He says, they claim to know God, but by their actions, they, den they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. Church, let us not claim to know Jesus, yet let our actions speak the opposite. Being prepared means that we are going to do everything that we can to let our words and our actions line up to speak to who Jesus is and how he has transformed our life. And I think to, the, to uh, Peter. And Peter there in the, in the courtyard, and three times he's asked, do you know Jesus? And three times he denies it. Peter could have been defined by that. He could have said, you know what? I'm a complete failure. But instead, he grew from that situation and he became one who went throughout the world and brought the gospel to people. I think of my own life when I was in high school. I have a brother who does not walk with Jesus. And he and I had this this relationship that was not really good in high school. I remember one time having a, having a kind of an altercation with him, and his words were this to me, Jeremy, you say you're a Christian, but your actions towards me don't show Jesus to me at all. From that day forward, I changed how I treated my brother. Because I realized that my actions need to speak loudly about the Jesus that I love and that I serve. And I can't ever let my actions not point people to Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do that well every day with my family, my friends working here at the church. I fail. But you know what? I'm trying each and every day to line more and more up with what Jesus wants for me. Because the world needs it. My neighbors need it. The kids on my baseball team, they need it. They need to see someone trying to live out their Christian faith. Being prepared means people are asking you about your hope. It's my question to you this morning. Are people asking about your hope? Are people saying, there's something different about you? Have they asked that this week, this month, or this year? I think often we aren't asked that question because we decide that we want to be comfortable and we want to fit in. The culture in America makes it so that you just fit in. Everyone's going this way. How the heck am I going to stand up and go the other way? But the world needs it. The world needs stronger parents, 
more engaged parents, more engaged managers at work, more engaged people leading other people and speaking up and having that hope, that hope that comes in Jesus. Philippians 2, 6 through 11 are these words about Jesus. Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his, his, his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to, de to death, even death on a cross. Church, for you and I, Jesus is a personal, per perfect example of someone who was prepared. Someone who knew that God being his number one, that he could put himself in a place, in a position that could change the course of history. You and I, we have that same opportunity. The scripture keeps going. And it says this, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, when we put Jesus as our number one and then we start to live out our words and actions matching up, we start putting ourselves in a position where people are starting to ask us where our hope comes from. God does something in us. He raises us up and gives us a platform where we can proclaim Jesus to the world. Now, if you don't hear anything else I say this morning, this is my last challenge for you when it means to be prepared, is just ask. Just ask him. Say, God, give me today the opportunity to show you to others around me in my words and my deeds. Give me that opportunity. And as I was writing this, when you try to write a sermon here inside these walls of Black Rock Church, it does not happen. You have to get away from here because there are so many distractions of uh, Bruce. He'll just come and talk to you whenever he wants. And uh, even when he put things on your door, it just doesn't happen. So I went to a local restaurant, and I, I go to the, this restaurant once in a while, and I built a relationship with the manager, and I'm sitting in his, his restaurant working on my sermon, and I get to this part, and I write these words, and God goes, okay, just ask me. I'm like, what? God, what do you mean by that? He's like, ask me. You haven't talked to the manager in a while. Ask me. So I said, okay, God. I'm asking, bring the manager over, have him sit down. I want to have a, a spiritual conversation with him. Start typing away on the computer. Two minutes later, manager sits down. <laughs> Next 15 minutes, we talk about what it truly means to have an authentic relationship with Jesus. That's not just about just going to church and saying I went to church, but having a real relationship with Jesus that transforms your life. Church, being prepared means just ask God each and every day as you're driving your kids to school, ask. As you're at work, ask. As you're in a line waiting for something to happen, ask. Just ask and say, God, show up. Help me to be present. Help me to stand out, to be someone who's different. God, in that moment, as I'm walking out of that restaurant, I said, God, is it, is it really this easy to just ask? He said, yes. Church, just ask. Just ask this week and say, God, use me to impact others. You know what? You're only gonna ask when he's your number one. You're not gonna have the courage when you're living on this side, when you're not trying to walk with him, you're not gonna ask but this week, ask. You know, for me, I, I love my kids, and my kids asked to build, for me to build them a tree fort. 
And so this spring, I had the opportunity to build them a tree fort. It took me two months and lots of Home Depot trips. And I kept going to Home Depot. And there was a guy at the Trumbull Home Depot, and he was selling solar panels all spring. And I would see him, and I would avoid him at all costs. <laughs> and there was one day I, w- I saw him, and so I went down another aisle, and I was getting something, and then I, he came down my aisle, and I was like, oh, no. So I tried to look really intent. I was trying to figure something out with something, and it didn't work, and he came over, and he was telling me all about how solar panels are saving the world, and they'll save me and my, my bank account. And I was like, hey, my house... It's, it's like surrounded by trees. There's no way a solar panel will ever work in my house. And so he convinced me. I gave him my address. He looked it up, and he was like, that's true. There's no way a solar panel will. And he walked away, and I was like, I will never see him again. I'm perfect. <laughs> Two days later, I forgot some screw or something, so I had to go back to Home Depot. And he came up to me again, and he forgot who I was. And I was like, I'm the tree guy that has all the trees. And he was like, oh, yeah. And we had a little chuckle and a smile. And, and a week later, I'm still building my tree for it. And I'm getting a little closer. And I see him again. And he comes up to me and he goes, there's something different about you. What's different? I said, it's Jesus. And he's like, I, that's what I thought. He's like, I, I knew there was something different about you. I, I interact with a lot of people here at Home Depot. There was something different about you. And we talked for a couple minutes. I don't remember about what. And Next week, I was wrapping up, get, like finishing my tree fort, and I, I had some more things I had to get. And so I'm at Home Depot, and, and I'm literally in the, like the front aisle, all the registers, and all of a sudden, I see him running towards me. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Does he forget who I am again? And uh, he didn't forget. He came running up, and he said, Jeremy, I need you to pray for me. Always be prepared. I need you to pray for me. Because you know what? I'm trying to buy this house, and it keeps falling through. And I'm getting frustrated with God. And so he thought that I was just going to just pray for him silently. I was like, I, no, I'm, I'm praying for you right here. Put both my hands on his shoulders, and right there in the middle of Home Depot, I prayed for this guy. Always be prepared. Be the one who your words and your actions line up together where you are so in love with Jesus that people, when they see you at Home Depot, they walk over and go, there has to be something different about you. What is it? I want that. Can you pray for me? Church, the world needs us. The world needs us to stand out, to be a shining light of what it means to know Jesus. So I'm gonna pray for you, church, that you're gonna continue to put Jesus as your number one, and this week, you have opportunities to ask Jesus to allow you to be prepared to put yourself in a position where people are going to start asking you, what is your hope? How can I have that hope? We wanna thank you for watching and listening to our sermons online, and we hope that uh, you will be inspired to live more like Jesus through these. Please check out blackrock.org for more information about our church. Know that you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. And also uh, know that you can give uh, to BlackRock and to our ministry through PushPay, through our mobile app, and on our website. Your uh, donations and your support of our ministry allows us to have uh, these videos online and for us to impact our community.